Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconry video. Uh, this video probably won't be too long, but I just want to go over the uh, intro to early stage weight management with a new Falcon. This is not the end all video on weight management. I've done some videos on the role of food and a little bit about weight management, but weight management is such a critical subject, I want to do it correctly. This is just an intro to the early stage part of the training with a new bird. If you saw my last video the other day, of course you know we're going to be using a brand new captive bred parent raised lanner falcon. And in doing so, that puts us in an interesting situation as to how to approach the weight management. These principles still apply with falcons of other ages, but again, I'm specifically referring to a captive bred, parent reared, still young falcon. It's only a couple months old. But we need to go first and talk a little bit about what on earth weight management is and why it is so crucial and why it is so misunderstood by non-falconers and people who are just getting into the sport. So you have to understand predators first. Predators of all kinds. Uh, herbivores, omnivores as well, but especially herbivores, they're just hub, hub. they're eating non-stop. Uh, I know in today's world we like to say, oh, a healthy diet is heavily plant-based. Well, it depends on who you are and what you're doing. If you're living at the North Pole, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, eating asparagus every day is not going to be the best way to give you energy. It's going to give you a lot of vitamins you need though, right? So there's different things. And is the is this plant cooked or is it raw? Well, in the wild, no other animal cooks their food besides us. That's important to remember. So herbivores are just... You look at grazers. Cow has four stomachs. And when a cow goes to the bathroom, it hardly looks like uh, anything other than wet grass. It's like, did you even digest? You went through four stomachs and that's what it's coming out looking like? Like, okay, maybe your body should try harder? No, raw plants are hard to break down. That's why if you are out of shape or fat like me, a big, lazy, overfed American, if I went on a strict plant diet, I would lose weight because I'm not extracting as much new nutrition in the form of energy from it. So it's actually can be a very good thing but, you know, so that's something to remember when we're talking about this thing is there is, don't just say a set statement, this food is good, this food is bad, this food has energy. Well, what do you mean by that, right? There's, there's complex, complex layers when it comes to nutrition for humans or any other animal. But generally speaking, predators, the name of the game is conserve energy. Reduce the amount of calories you expend and try to acquire as many calories that you can use as possible, right? So think about a lion. Do you see lions doing jumping jacks all the time? No, most of the time, lions are just laying around. Lions are lying around, uh, no pun intended there. They are just chilling. Why should they do anything more? If you're doing more, you're expending energy that you need to hold on to for survival. We live in an age where most people have access to uh, food that they can purchase, like at a grocery store, right? And we have refrigerators where we can store food so that it won't go bad. That's not how it is in nature. You have to survive. So the idea of a predator is I when I am going to do something to acquire a caloric intake and expend energy to do so, I want to make it count. I'm not just going to go mess around wasting and burning energy for no reason. So you, you, when you're watching like all these National Geographic videos and stuff and you see a cheetah rawr, rawr, running and like, okay, wow, look, this cheetah's chasing this impala, trips it, brr, brr, gets it. You see a lion running, running, rawr, gets a zebra, brr, right? We're like, wow. You see his bald eagle, whoosh, whoosh, catch a fish, wow. Those are the clips we see. But 80, 90% of the rest of that animal's life is just sitting around. An eagle, I'm just sitting here on a tree, making sure nobody else comes to kill me. Mm -hmm. And you're like, look, oh, there's an eagle. Maybe it's gonna fly. Is it full? <coughs> it's probably not gonna go fly. Look, we're on a savanna, an African savanna on a safari. Look at those lions. Are they gonna do it? They're just sleeping. Why aren't they doing anything? I, I want them to do something. They're not there to entertain you. They're there to survive. They're wild animals trying to survive. We need to remember that principle because we've done everything we can to pull ourselves out of the natural cycle of things, of the natural order of things. That's, that's, that's tricky because our thinking is inaccurate. When it comes to falconry, you gotta remember that wild birds are the same way. A falcon, a hawk, an owl, an eagle, anything you're training, their default setting 
is like, well, if I have the ability to kill something, I want to eat as much as I can. That was a big meal, hum. I'm just gonna sit on this fence post for a day and digest. I don't know, I might not hunt for a few more days, guys. That's what they're doing. That's what's normal, is to gorge fast. Gorge fast. And most large predators and most apex predators, that's what we see them do. Falconry is different, right? Falconry is not just the natural order of things in the wild. Falconry arose originally from ancient peoples in different parts of the world uh, find, trying to find a better way to acquire food. Remember, we're talking about before bows and arrows, certainly before guns and grocery stores, and most importantly, before agriculture in most parts of the world, right? And so it's like, we, we hunt, we're using spears and atlatls, our bare hands, our wit. Um, wait a minute, oh, look, that falcon dove down and it knocked a bird out of the sky. Maybe it caught a duck. The duck's too heavy to fly off with, and so it's mantling over it. I'm gonna run over, scare it off, steal its duck. Wait a minute, what if I trained that falcon to do that every day and we shared the meal? Then every day, I could, it's like a happy meal. They got me a duck, you have part, I'll eat the rest. That was kind of the idea. It was about survival, it was about a more efficient way. Which is funny because in most parts of the world now, falconry is one of the most inefficient ways to get food. I, I, I remember that there was even, in medieval times, I don't remember which book, but there's a, there's a famous quote where um, it was kind of like, a, if I recall, it was like a poetic view where there was a lord and he had all his trappings and he had his professional falconer with a cadge of falcons and he's on his horse with his favorite falcon and his hounds to smell out and, and he's traipsing across this farmer's land and this farmer is like, like kind of almost mocking him, like you have to have bells, you have to have this trained bird, you have to have hood, leather equipment, all this stuff, all this training. It's like, you know, you know, why not just use a bow and arrow or why not just go down to the poultry farm and just purchase a duck you're wealthy and he's like you don't understand sport and there's something like that and so it's not the most efficient way to get food it's about the love of well for different people it's different things but for me it's the love of the birds and seeing them do what they do best so back to the point of weight management if you flew them like a wild bird then you would have them go hunt catch something gorge themselves to an unhealthy level and then just not fly them for a week you know you're like, you're too fat, you know, yeah, I'll feed you after a couple days, but, you know, you're too fat, and then we'll do it again. And what, you're going to fly your birds like seven times a season? That doesn't work. So think of a bird of prey, you think of your falcon as, a, as an Olympic athlete, an Olympic athlete that you're training. And so you got to think about where's the motivation? What do they want to do? Are they healthy? Are they fit? Do they have energy? And do they have motivation? Do they have drive to go actually pursue prey? Normally, just straight up hunger is, right? If you've been fasting for several days, then it's like, whoa, I gotta go now get some more food or else I'm gonna die. That's not what we wanna do. We don't wanna have like feast or famine. We want a bird that we can consistently hunt every day. A bird that is motivated to hunt and a bird that has energy to hunt and actually pursue and perform athletically. And just like an Olympic athlete has to work out, they have to reduce the fat, build up the muscle and work out and exercise. Uh, I'm out of shape. If, if, if I just ate a big old huge meal and you said, hey Ben, go run a marathon and I'll give you a hamburger as a reward, I'd be like, no, I'm just going to sit on this couch and digest because I ate too much for breakfast. Right? So Weight management with a bird is, um, and again, this isn't the end all weight management video. I'm, I'm going to be specifically talking about how to approach it with a new bird. So uh, you have your bird fat, you think of a butterball turkey, right? You have the keel bone and you have the flight muscles here, these uh, pectoral muscles that attach here to the arm, and call it a wing, but it is an arm that pull the wing down and in, okay? So think of you're eating a turkey, the breast meat, that is the musculature that you want to build up the muscle and reduce the fat from, right? So feeling the keel, that's how we did it in ancient days. That's a rough indicator of the health of your bird. But far more importantly is a scale. I use a digital scale that weighs in grams. Some people will go half gram, quarter gram. And there's people who weigh in ounces. And there's people who prefer uh, non-digital scales, but for me, Weighing in grams seems to serve me pretty well with a digital scale. So with um, normally I, I have a much more uh, specific regime of how I'm going to um, kind of approach it 
during the hunting season. But we're dealing right now with a baby bird. Full sized, but a baby, only a few months old. And so the approach needs to be slower and it's not so much about, um, it's, not, it's not so much about getting to a set weight at this point. At this stage, it is more about tracking and establishing a baseline. And you're doing some moderate weight management, but why, why do you not want to do so much? Well, right now in this stage, a young bird that's only two or three months old, it is full sized, but the bone density is not yet there. The musculature, the density in the musculature is not yet there. And so they, their, their body is still filling in the, the molecular gaps, so to speak. And they're still kind of, you know, becoming robust. So even though they're full sized, you need to uh, worry about that. So even though you always need to make sure that a bird has a nutritious diet, when you're raising a baby or if you have a baby at this age, that's a couple months old, it's imperative that you still have a very rich diet to help them. Uh, so good food would be something like, I usually use quail with uh, some Vitahox sprinkled on as well to give them that extra vitamin need. Now, when you're weighing your bird, it uh, depending on the species, some birds do well with the hood, some birds do well without. But whether you weigh your bird hooded or unhooded, with a leash on, without a leash on, you need to be consistent because we're weighing in grams. So if you're going to have your bird hooded, keep it that way because that's going to factor into the weight. So for this bird, he's doing so well, but I'm going to leave his hood on and I'm going to have his uh, no leash on, just Jess's. So zero out the scale, put them on the scale before feeding. Now, part of this principle is not just um, how much does he weigh, but what time of day does he weigh that weight? It is best, in my, my personal opinion, especially during the hunting season, weighing your bird at the same time every day, flying your bird at the same time every day. And if you can't, you need to weigh throughout the day to have, again, a baseline of how what is the rate at which they lose weight as they digest. Because you got to remember, their metabolism is much faster than ours. And so you need to keep on top of that. So establishing the baseline, how much do they weigh? Write that down on your, on your list of weights. Say, okay, this bird weighs this many grams at this time on this day. Then take them off and weigh your food. How much food are you going to weigh? 20 grams, 30 grams, 80 grams, 100 grams. How much are you going to weigh? Take note of that. What is that? And then, of course, add those two together and you have the weight of your bird. If you're feeding healthy food that is going to have feathers or fur or bones or guts, different, um, different organic material is going to digest differently. Uh, bones, for example, it, it's good for a raptor to have roughage, feathers, fur, bones for them to cast up a pellet. That's good. But especially at this age where they're so young and I want more calcium absorption, I will take, uh, like if I have a, a quail leg, I will take and um, the bone where it is, I'll just take game shears, like pair of scissors and snip, 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 so that the bone is still in the leg, but that it's tiny little pieces all along the way that are easier to break down and pull some calcium for them to absorb and utilize in the uh, densifying of their actual bones, right? But it is wise, especially if you are new to this and you are learning, to, to write down not only what the weight of the meat was that you're going to give them and then the combined weight of the meat and the bird in the end like okay at this much then this bird went from this weight to this weight but also take a note of what you fed them because i got to tell you uh some breast meat is going to be different than wings or did you feed lungs from the, from whatever prey animal okay well that's going to go through different it's going to offer a lot of this but not a lot of that it's good to note that because you're trying to chart now eventually we're going to have some videos here coming up that I'm going to go into more detail on the principles of how to get a good weight and, and what's a good flying weight, what's a good hunting weight. But again, right now for this bird, we just want to establish what is your baseline and what is your response. And of course, he's fat. So, it, you know, I can know, well, his response today was this. Oh, he was, he was very interested in the meat. Okay, well, maybe I'll keep him this way. Or he was just kind of, he kept dropping and he wasn't very interested. Okay, maybe I'll drop him a few grams. And so the maybe the next day I will reduce the amount of meat I'm feeding him by five grams and then see how he responds the next day after that. Um, so you just bit by bit will follow that procedure and log it down. Now, again, <clears throat> I think a lot of falconers in the summertime when we're molting our birds, 
then we're just keeping them fat. We're not weighing our birds. We're just like, hey, eat good, healthy food, drink lots of water, and relax while you're growing new feathers. I want you as fat as can be. Uh, but then in the fall and winter, early spring, when we're hunting them is when you cut them down. Again, this bird is different. This bird is a baby who hatched this year, a few months ago. All his feathers have come in at the same time. He's not molting. That's how a baby bird uh, exists. Their feathers come in all at once. And so it's a different approach where I'm not, I don't want him to be fat, but I don't want to cut his weight too quickly at this stage. You know, I want to give him a few more weeks, a month as he densifies up. That's probably not even a word, densifies. As his bones get denser from calcium absorption from his food and the nutrition he gets from his food. He needs to kind of fill out, so to speak, uh, at the molecular level. So need to establish a baseline. And we'll ch remember it's hot too. M in most parts of the world, a hot bird is not motivated. They're like, ugh, I'm not either, man. It's over hundred degrees outside. You offer me a hamburger. I'm like, how about some air conditioning and an ice water, right? They, they, they're not that motivated. So when we're getting into colder months, yes, I'm gonna drop weight for hunting, but maybe not as much as you think because the cold also acts as a motivator. Now, uh, we'll also get into it in later videos and talk about how a lot of people, if you trap a wild bird, you might cut their weight initially, but then eventually you bring them all the way back up to their original weight is when you trap them because you've built enough trust as well. And there may be a very active species like a Merlin that is just like, yes, let's go, let's hunt, let's do our thing. But we'll get to that later. As for this one, I hope this uh, helps you understand just the very basics of charting with a new bird, brand new bird uh, that's still growing. Uh, still becoming denser in the bones. And um, let me know if you have any questions about this. Uh, again, knowing that I'll have more videos on uh, coming up on weight management. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. It really does help me build this channel up. I'm trying to get it going and help uh, reach as many people as I can. And uh, to everyone everywhere, as always, happy hawking.